cassava is important because it's a full staple, first of all, for close to 250 million Africans, just Africans, I don't mean the people who use it in Asia or in Latin America. And for some places in Africa, for example in Nigeria, where I come from, a lot of people eat cassava three times a day in different food forms, and this is not exaggeration. Cassava is so important in Africa that we need to have it deliver on being a good food product, being resistant, being productive enough for a poor farmer to live on it by making business from it, from sales from the roots, from sales from processed products. So cassava is not only food now, cassava is also an industrial raw material, which is what will make it you know, more marketable, that will open up the market for the crop. You can use cassava to produce starch, high quality cassava flour can really compete with wheat flour. A country can depend on cassava economy if they get it right, and if we as scientists get the right uh, varieties out there for them to grow. If you begin to use the right combination of good seed, a good uh, agronomy, fertilizer, good extension delivery systems, cassava can really sustain a nation because we've seen that it can. You have in Nigeria now some of the Zimbabwean farmers who left Zimbabwe got to Nigeria and they changed from corn to cassava. So because they see the potential that it has, but cassava cannot remain a potential. We want to use the right technologies, but more than molecular breeding, we want to use it to bring out the ideal varieties, the best bed varieties that farmers will grow and they will get the best value that they have put in. Yeah, GCP has contributed substantially to our human resources and infrastructure. For example, not less than 15 people have been trained either for degrees related studies or hands-on training, even fellowships since 2005 when we started with GCP. We have four members of staff and also a researcher who participated in that exercise and ever since a lot of things have improved. The weather station data is being collected as at Wendu, our field preparation, maintenance of um, tractors and uh, you know field design. There's a lot of improvement, even in our irrigation system. Yeah, there are many, and I'll just list a few. One of them is a lab. There was no such laboratory until we got a GCP grant in Omodike. It's a basic molecular lab, but at least we can do DNA fingerprinting, could extract DNA, we could do some analysis, we could apply it to our breeding work. We could even extract DNA alone and send to a genotyping facility, else we are facilitated by GCP. Then we have a rehabilitation of screen houses. We've had draft phenotyping infrastructure now in place, you know, characterization of the sites where we do our drought tolerance trials in Nigeria and in Ghana because we collaborate with our sister institute in Ghana. So GCP has facilitated all that. A rain out shelter is being constructed, assistance in procuring facilities, in negotiating genotyping through the genotyping support services. All those are things GCP has done to help us move forward with our work. Like they call it a one-stop. It's like the place you need to get to and it looks like all your problems are solved. I have quite some experience in statistical analysis. It's always a challenge for me to begin to write programs 
and begin to interpret. But now there's a pipeline. I have the basic knowledge, but I don't have to waste my time writing all those programs. You know, you just click and you get the results you want and you can make your decision. I'm glad that I am one of the people participating in the development of this tool, in testing it to make sure that um, it serves the purpose. That is very innovative. You don't waste time working like a statistician when you should be breeding in the field, developing varieties, making choices, selecting. I don't know whether it exists anywhere else, but even if it does, it exists in the developed countries where people pay for such services. I believe most developing nations who will use the IBP are going to benefit a lot. Because the young scientists who are not as trained as people in the universities in US or Europe will be able to use tools. They can collect data in an automated fashion. We can have database. It's not like a paper-based uh, system where, you know, uh, you can be beaten by rain in the tropics and that's it for your data, you know, in the field. But now we have all those kind of things, the tablets, we can collect data in the field. You can go straight and download. You don't need to waste time again to key in data. From that data you upload, you go to analyze through the, the analytical pipeline. I really raise hands for GCP for going that way because that is where they should go to. We've made progress with the work on cassava especially through the application of molecular breeding, which GCP has facilitated. When you have a good project that runs well and is producing results, it kind of attracts other projects. We now have quite a handful of uh, projects. It's on the basis of the work we've done with the GCP. GCP has quite a lot of experienced scientists who guide the process. They've had experience not only in the developed world, but they've worked in developing countries. They know the challenges. They feel it. They feel the same problems we do. So when we tell them our problems, it's not strange to them. They really appreciate it. That has helped us a lot. Because of the kind of support we've had, we've been able to release one variety of cassava that is bred with molecular markers for resistance to cassava mosaic disease. There's another one that we'll be releasing in the next few months, if not few weeks, that is high in starch. But we bred it for resistance to CMD and it's combining another trait, which is very important. Those are real big progress for a breeder to see that the tool is helping you deliver what you are meant to deliver, which is for us, the primary product is improved varieties. GCP has helped in making young scientists in, in my institute, everybody wants to be a breeder. They are eager, they want to use the technology. One problem that we are having in agriculture all over the world, whether developed or developing, is lack of breeders. But in my institute, we have many people who are aspiring to be breeders because they've seen that molecular breeding can deliver results, they feel that molecular breeding is modern, young person will get attracted to that technology. So we have made progress in having the interest of people you know, come back to plant breeding and even other uh, supporting areas like molecular pathology. We've been able to use the GCP to attract that so that we can improve on developing cassava varieties with resistance to diseases, with tolerance to drought, and with high yielding capacity. The GCP has helped us to raise the consciousness of not only the young staff, but even the management. They appreciate us and they really give consideration to our work because they see that we are dealing with serious-minded people, people who want to help the system, people who want to have the best varieties released. So we've been able to articulate all that through the assistance of the GCP. Now, we don't have to genotype our varieties anymore because we need to have medium to high throughput system. 
and that our laboratory cannot support. The whole world too has moved on to having more uh, genotypes and more data points. So there are genotyping facilities. GCP has been able to assist us in negotiating. There's always somebody at the GCP supporting us to make sure that we get the best rates and we get the best technology. We do SNP genotyping now. We have several mapping populations, up to five being genotyped currently at K Biosciences in UK. That has been facilitated by the GCP. We've been able to get involved with other organizations like Cornell University to begin to consider other kinds of molecular technologies. All this we try to integrate, you know, one project complementing the other. But the point now is that we can do better work, we can be more precise, we save time in breeding. We, once we use marker-assisted selection to select for resistance to diseases, we've also gone into pyramiding of genes for resistance to cassava mosaic disease and other diseases. We are using molecular markers, and this is still facilitated by the GCP. And so many things I can keep on counting. It's really gratifying to know that you belong to a group that supports a national program to operate at a level that was never imagined. Well, the best you could do was to dream. This was the area that belongs to only CG centers. But now as a NAS program, we can do this. And we think it's a great development and a good step in the right direction. When I said that we use molecular markers to screen for resistance to disease, well, you can say it's one or two markers. But you know, the thing with disease is that after a while, the pathogen may evolve and become more resistant and will overcome the resistance in inherent in the plant. So, but when you have more than one or two genes, you kind of accumulate them in one variety or in a group of varieties. That is called pyramiding. So when you accumulate them there, they tend to you know, support each other in resisting. So there will be a synergistic relationship or synergistic action in providing stability in resistance. That is what we want to do so that our varieties will not succumb easily to mosaic disease, for example. We're also working with our partners in Tanzania and in, in IITA on cassava brown streak disease. We want to validate markers already developed by them in different genetic backgrounds with different populations. Those will help us identify which ones are newer sources of resistance to cassava brown streak disease, which is devastating the entire eastern and southern Africa. So that is the kind of work we are doing in the pyramiding of resistance genes. There are two international centers that work on cassava. In the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, SIAT in Colombia, and the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, uh, IITA at Ibadan. The GCP has been able to help us to forge a, a relationship that is mutual and is sustainable in the area of molecular breeding. The GCP has also encouraged us and there's respect for each other now and we can work better and everybody will have clearly defined goals and roles in projects. That was done through the GCP and it has even rubbed off on other newer projects because of that standard set by the GCP. It has helped relationships so we can work better. It has helped to be more focused. It has helped to empower the NAS more because now we will not just be at the receiving end of finished product, we also participate in developing technology. So that has really helped us to link up with the outside world and having seen that kind of relationship working, we've been able to move on to places like Cornell University, Donald Danford Plant Science Center in the US and many other places like ETH. So we collaborate with this in US and Europe. There's the relationship that exists between NAS in Africa that GCP has really helped us to forge. It's stronger now. We go directly to a NAS in Tanzania. We support each other. They call it South-South collaboration and we, the GCP has done all that and is very helpful.